Hey everyone, I'm Janelle and I'm gonna guess if you clicked on this video it's because you figured out how to weave a wall hanging but now that it's time to try to get it off of the loom, you're totally freaked out that you're gonna destroy your piece. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you step by step exactly how to get your piece off the loom. All right, before you take your weaving off the loom, think about the top of it. I've finished this piece with a twining stitch at the top. What I like about a twining stitch is it kind of locks in the warp strings so that things aren't likely to shift around and everything. So it just is gonna be less of a hassle. Now to take it off the loom, I'm simply gonna just slip the warp strings off the loom. If yours are too tight, what you can do is go to the bottom and cut it off the loom. You'll wanna stay really close to the bottom of your loom. And if you have this type of loom, you could just unscrew the screws as well but I'm gonna just flip this over. I'm taking two strings at a time. I'm gonna pull up towards the top of the loom and just slip the warp string off of the loom. I also started this piece with a twining stitch and again, it just really locks everything in place so that you don't have to worry as much when you're taking your piece off the loom. Now that the top of my piece is off of the loom, I can just simply flip over my loom like this and slip off the other end. From there, I'm going to be hanging this weaving directly from the loops. And again, I do have that twining stitch at the top. So as you can see, as it came off the loom, it didn't really shift very much. Sometimes it can a little bit still, but if you didn't finish yours with a twining stitch, you can always do overhand knots, which I'll show you how to do on the bottom. Now that we're gonna be working on the bottom, I don't want my piece to sort of slip and slide around very much. So I'm gonna just take a book and set it on top of the weaving so that it just holds it in place. If you have a piece with a lot of texture and wool roving and you don't wanna squish it very much, you definitely don't have to do this step. It'll just move around on you a little bit more. So now all I have to do is slip out this piece of cardstock carefully. And as you can see again, because of that twining stitch at the bottom of the piece, nothing is really shifting around too much. Then what I'm going to do is tie mostly overhand knots at the bottom. But on these ends, you can see this is where I started my warp at the bottom of my loom. So there's not like a full loop like this and the same on the other end. So on each side, I'm just gonna knot these together. We'll see if I can do an overhand knot, but you can do a regular knot as well. It's just sometimes you might wanna make it a, a triple knot. I like overhand knots because they don't slip as much as regular knots, but I'm just simply doing overhand knots and I'm just, I'm not pushing up super hard on them. I'm just trying to have the knot touching the base of our weaving. The next thing we're gonna do is tuck in all of these warp string ends. I'm gonna use just this simple little metal yarn needle. These are usually found in the craft store, either in the embroidery section and sometimes in the yarn section. So what I like to do, because these are fairly short, is I'm going to sew in my needle first and I'm just going through this little channel right here. So a, a few of these weft strings, kind of how like you tuck in yarn ends as well. So I'm gonna put the needle in and then this one, because we have this knot here, I'm just gonna trim that piece off and then I'm going to just thread my needle, pull those ends through, and then all you have to do is trim off the ends. Be careful not to cut anything important. And that's how you finish the bottom. So let's do a couple more. I'm gonna sew in the needle, thread it, pull the ends through, and then you can keep going and then cut them all off at the end as well if you like. Sometimes that makes it a little bit more efficient. So now that I have all of those ends tucked in, I can go trim them all off. So I like to trim them really close, but again, without cutting off any of the fringe or any of the other yarn or warp strings. Now the bottom of our weaving is totally finished. It's not gonna shift around or go anywhere. Here's what the back of the bottom looks like when it's done, and here's the top. Check out this video next for a super easy way for you to hang your weaving from a dowel.